Today I will be using a Riemann sum formula. So a Riemann sum formula to integrate uh, from 0 to 2 of x squared dx. Now this is a very simple integral. The reason why I'm doing this is because the Riemann sum formula is very complex. So, despite this being complex and this being simple, it kind of averages out and it's pretty interesting. So, what we're going to be doing is, if we look at the graph, that's horrible, of x squared, there's two, zero, what we're looking for is the area under the curve right here, right? Okay. And we can always just use the integral formula, but we will be using the Riemann sum formula. And the Riemann sum formula is the following. The limit as n goes to infinity of the sum to n i subset 0 of f x subset i times delta x. Okay, pretty interesting. It's pretty fun. Okay, so the first thing we should solve for is delta x. And the equation you learn for delta x is delta x equals b minus a over n. b is always this, a is this. And we'll keep n as a variable because if you look we're setting n to infinity. So delta x equals 2 over n. So now we're going to plug this into the equation. So now our new equation with values is the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum to n starting at i subset equals 0 f of 2i subset over n multiplied by 2n, which 2 over n. Okay, so that, that's where it, we just plugged in values here. Okay, so knowing that subset, uh, we use f to apply. Uh, f x squared, so we square everything in here. So our new equation becomes the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum n subset i equals zero. Uh, we square the top, everything on the top, because x squared. 4i squared, and we also square the bottom, n squared, times 2 n, 2 over n. Okay? So that, so, so far, here's the original formula. We plug in values for uh, delta x uh, with subset i. We now apply what the formula said, uh, x squared, so we square everything here. And this is where we are so far. Oops. So now what we can do is, or the important thing is to bring out everything other than i. So if you know about sums, you can bring things in front, and but we will leave i. So what this looks like is the limit n goes to infinity of, now we're going to bring out the 4, we're going to bring out the 2, so that's 8. We're going to bring out the n, so that's over n cubed, leave in the i's of the sum going to n starting at i subset equals 0, and this will be i squared. Okay, so that was just moving things. And now, 
uh, a formula that most people should know if you're taking calculus is if you have this part right here uh, the sum uh, from i equals 0 to n uh, of i squared, this part right here that does equal something this part right here equals n times 2n plus 1 times right up here n plus 1 okay so I'll rewrite everything down here so now what we have is so we have the limit as n goes to infinity and now all that was replaced so we have 8 over n cubed that didn't do anything and then we're able to replace this by multiplying all this all right, oops, all this is over 6. That's kind of random, but it is. Uh, multiplied all this by n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. Okay, so we replaced this part for this because these two are equal. Okay, so now that we have this, we're just going to keep moving things. So now what we move is we can move these two. Okay, so we get the limit n goes to infinity of 8 over 6. I'll multiply by n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. Okay. I'm not over 6, over n cubed. Sorry. This is a little challenging. So we just move those. So now we're going to foil out all of this. And when you foil that out, uh, I'll assume you know how to foil. Like, I'll just tell you what you should get. You get the limit of n goes to infinity of 8 over 6 times, when you foil this out, you get 2n cubed plus 3n squared plus n all over n. Okay, so now there's two things we need to do here, and then we can wrap it up. Is move this in front, because you can do that. It's not being affected, this is not dependent on that. And split this up. So this will go with the n. Let's go with the n, and this will go with the n. You can do that because you're adding. Okay, so that will be one of the last steps. So now we get 8, 6 times with the limit as n goes to infinity of 2n cubed over n cubed. I forgot to write the cube. Sorry plus 3n squared over n cubed plus n over n cubed okay so now we can finally take the limit first of all these cancel out uh, two cancel out on the top maybe there's one over bottom one cancels on top so then you get 8 6 limit 
and goes to infinity of this cancels out to become two plus uh, three over n plus one over n squared. Okay, now you take the limit. Um, as n goes to infinity, this is unaffected. Three over infinity, three over a huge number goes to zero, so this goes to zero. One over a huge number squared is zero. So you get eight six and then two plus zero is zero, so you get eight six times two. So then you get sixteen six equals eight thirds. And that is the answer. So if you were to plug this into a calculator, like any smart person should, uh, the amount of space from 0 to 2 is 8 thirds units. Uh, so, yeah, that's not. And if you were to do this just the integral way, uh, you get 2 cubed over 3 because you add one to here plus one, so then you have x cubed and then you divide by that new number over three so x cubed over three, two cubed over three equals eight thirds okay so that was fun, a little challenging so uh, thanks for watching